What's up everybody? Today Call of Duty released the uh, roadmap for Warzone 2.0 Season 2 as well as Modern Warfare 2 and DMZ. Uh, a lot of changes coming. We'll know more exact changes for Warzone 2 when we get patch notes next week. But I'm going to go ahead and go through the roadmap today. Um, as usual, I'm going to focus on Warzone 2. Might skim over DMZ a little bit. Probably going to really skip Modern Warfare 2. And then of course I'll go over the stuff that applies to everything. Um, if you want to read this stuff for yourself, like I said, uh, like I always say, it'll be linked down below. Um, so I'm going to skip like the Forge Your Path section. Warzone 2 overview, you don't really need to go too much into because we're going to go over all that stuff. But Resurgence Mode returns with the new uh, Asika Island map, which I can link my video down below going over all of the POI information we got so far. Uh, new contract, public event, and more. DMZ expands to Asika Island, the power struggle, blah, blah, blah. Um, welcome to Asika Island. Um, like I said, I'll have this, uh, I'll have the video linked down below as well as this blog post for the deep dive. Um, then we have Resurgence Modes returns with new map. So this is where we're going to really start talking about stuff where, as before, we'll have solos, duos, trios, and quads like we had at the end of Rebirth Island and Fortune's Keep. Um, it says... It should say somewhere on here the map i know it says uh it says the map is roughly 30 percent larger than previous small maps so fortunes keep and rebirth were very similar size this one's about, almost a third bigger than both of those maps um and then we know how it goes you have re uh you have respawn countdowns until your squad's completely eliminated and last last one standing ends up winning so we know how that works um, a new feature for Resurgence called Restore Honor. Uh, every operator on Asika Island will drop a dog tag upon death once per match, both in Resurgence or Battle Royale. I, Resurgence or Battle Royale on Asika Island? Well, we'll see. Well, I guess we'll find out what that means eventually. Which can either be picked up by a squad mate or themselves after redeploying. Doing so grants a small cash reward as well as a single UAV ping that marks both enemy threats and nearby supply boxes. So essentially you land on a grab it and it'll show you loot and enemies nearby to help you regain whether it's finding out who downed a squad mate or getting a head start on rebuilding a loadout choosing the restore honor is a solid strategy for continued survival now i did mention that it's good for regaining unless you can't go grab it your teammate shouldn't grab it you should be landing on that and grabbing that uh new contract search and seizure this is going to be for resurgence so i don't think this is going to come to almazra but in addition to contracts originally in Battle Royale modes like Safecracker and Bounty, Ashika Island will have an additional contract search and seizure to take up for cash and other in-match rewards. It is expected to go live in season, so it won't be available at launch, which I hate when they do stuff like this. Just wait till you're going to launch it to announce it. But search and seizure involves reclaiming a stolen vehicle, either an SUV or patrol boat from Shadow Company forces somewhere on the island. After you accept the contract, the vehicle's approximate location is revealed on the minimap and is a marker in the overworld. Operators must neutralize any shadow company forces guarding the vehicle and then pick up the key dropped by one of the soldiers and get the vehicle safely to its designated drop-off point. Expect heavy resistance en route to this destination as shadow company has been rumored to have their hands on some powerful hardware ready to repel operators venturing in the aisle. New public event, Data Heist, in-season and resurgence. So another thing that they're teasing that's probably not going to come till mid-season. Um, Intel's power, especially during a Data Heist, a new exclusive public event on Ashika Island. During the second circle collapse, three uplink stations will come online around the map, allowing players to download critical intel from them, which, by the way, they're probably uh, not going to do it till in-season, just so you can learn the map some. Um, in exchange for valuable in-match rewards, squads can hack into and stand near the uplink station to gain this intel, but they will face resistance from Shadow Company combatants guarding these precious machines. Download progress can be sped up by eliminating these combatants, while other operators can halt progress through contesting the station area directly or using a DDoS field upgrade. Uh, successfully completing a download rewards XP cash and a random piece of tactical equipment. Squads that visit two or three uplink stations and successfully download their intel will receive increased rewards such as a random kill streak or even advanced UAV. Additional new features Season 2 will include several notable changes to Warzone 2, including an updated gulag that will host 1v1 duels, changes to armor plates, vests, and backpacks, and battle royale, customizable perk packages and loadouts, and more. I also did a video on this, so I'll link the video as well as the blog down below. Redeploy drones coming in season something else. I wish they would come at launch I don't know why this is something why show us um, until it's gonna come but in season usually means mid-season update uh, Redeploy drones. They're just the successor to the redeploy balloons We had in caldera and on rebirth island and fortunes keep 
Um, to use a reploy drone, simply hook a cable up to the drone via interaction. So you go stand on the drone, hook a cable up, I'm guessing, and then it'll launch you up. Otherwise, it'll just be a normal like zipline interaction like it was before. After ascending to where the drone is hovering in the sky, an operator will be launched in the direction they are facing, allowing them to parachute down safely to a distant location while ascending. Operators can rotate around the cable to best position themselves for launch, and they can hit fire weapons and detach at any point. These new drones have a few differences compared to redeploy balloons. Notably, they can relocate to a safe area after a short period if they are within the circle collapse. So if gas closes on them, they can push into the circle. Um, only a certain amount number of drones will rep reposition after each circle collapse. So if they're all out of zone, they might all relocate, and then one less, and then one less, and then one less, and then none. Um, we'll have to actually see how that works out. With all drones going out of commission after several circle collapses have occurred, so there will be none late game, which is good. Uh, I guess. On the downside, the high-tech nature makes them easy targets for lock-on missiles, and they are too expensive for an operator to replace. Instead, new drones will fly in for a short amount of time if there's an available safe location hover. So before, you had to, like, rebuy the balloons. It was, like, 300 or $500. Now, after a short period of time, the drone will just... A new drone will fly in. New combatant rusher in season and resurgence. So this is new AI. So instead of AI trying to shoot you with a shotgun or an AR or a rifle from... However far away, these guys are going to push up and try to stab you and shoot you with their pistol, essentially. Um, that's all that really says. Um, rushers are meant to be down just as quickly as they sprint, especially in confined in indoor spaces where they are most effective. Expect them to hit the ground running in resurgence mode with AI only appearing under certain conditions such as a data heist. So resurgence will only have AI on data heist or certain events or conditions, I guess. That's kind of vague. Um, I don't know what those other conditions would be. Discover the secrets of Asika Island. Like previous smaller Warzone maps, Asika Island has its own secrets for operators to uncover. Use all of your senses and be curious during resurgence matches, and you may just stumble upon some legendary supply boxes or other items that can help you towards victory. Uh, DMZ expansion to Asika Island and the new Crown fra Faction, which you only get the new Crown Faction if you um, if you have Modern Warfare 2, which is dumb for free-to-play mode. I'll go ahead and link their blog post down below for this. I didn't make a video on this one because I'm not that into DMZ at this point. Um, but I'll link their blog post if you want to check that out for yourself. Um, new boss, bomb maker, and weapons case on Asika Island. More DMZ stuff. Uh, point of update, point of interest updates in Almazra. Uh, you might recognize this plane from the fun, uh, famous map, um, what's it, Afghan from Modern Warfare 2, which I know is a beloved map. So they're integrating that POI here. Um, intel from Amazra indicate that a downed aircraft has been spotted in the uh, north of Said City with plumes of thick black smoke visible from the summit above the Satik Caves complex. Elsewhere, enemy reinforcements have also redacted, resulting in subterrain redacted between multiple points of interest. So it sounds like they've blown up underground and made tunnels, maybe, resulting in a submarine subterranean tunnel or something. Between multiple points of interest in the north. Also, we are confirming reports of redacted being recommissioned and ready for passengers on the main blank in the region. Who knows what that's going to be because the train is already available. So maybe the... Oh, you know what that's going to be? Heavy chopper, probably. Um, given the amount of existing reconnaissance in this area, this intel will be declassified as part of a tactical overview to be released tomorrow. So we're going to find out more tomorrow, which, um, depending on the time and what time it is, I will make a video on because I am going to be out of town as of tomorrow. Um, then we have multiplayer stuff. If you want to read this, like I said, this blog post will be linked down below. Um, the only notable thing is that we're getting Museum back from the beta, and we're getting Dome as a core multiplayer map, and then they just have Zaya Observatory as a battle map, as well as Al Malik International, so the airport. Um, we're getting infected, gun game, and... Um, we're getting infected and gun game coming back upon launch of the season, and then we're getting grind, whatever mode that is. Hardcore, not tier one. Tier one's being replaced. Hardcore is coming, season one. Drop zones and in season game mode. Um, all or nothing is in season game mode. One in the chamber, which I love, is going to be in season, and then a new raid's coming. And then we have the general overview. Um, path of Ronin Season Challenges. Complete challenges in Warzone 2 or Modern Warfare 2 to earn rewards, including a new functional weapon. Ronin returns with an arsenal. Vanquish your opponents like a true warrior with their new operator and five new weapons during the season, three of which are available for free in the Battle Pass. New personal watercraft vehicle. Engage in fast-paced aquatic combat using the new aquatic vehicle. Spoiler alert, it's a jet ski. 
Uh, walk the path of Ronin launch event. Following the way of the warrior will lead to spoils of war. At the beginning of season two, the path of Ronin challenges will present all operators with seven challenges to be completed in Warzone Two or Modern Warfare Two, based on the seven virtues of Bushido: integrity, respect, courage, honor, compassion, sincerity, and loyalty. Each challenge comes with a reward for completion, such as a gun screen or weapon charm. Complete all seven challenges in Warzone Two or Modern Warfare Two and get the new crossbow functional weapon. So after that, we have more new weapons. Uh, the ISO Hemlock Assault Rifle on the ISO platform. I can't think off the top of my head what's on the ISO platform. Um, I barely touch this game these days. Uh, KV Broadside Shotgun on the Cast Off platform. platform. Uh, bringing the so the sorry I should read the descriptions for these. The ISO Hemlock Assault Rifle, powerful enhanced rifle from the Expedite Firearms, is designed to. Take both 5.56 and subsonic 300 black ammunition, providing battlefield advantage in any situation. How to unlock free within the Season 2 Battle Pass. KV Broadside Shotgun. Bringing the power of the 12 gauge to the cast off platform, the KV Broadside is the fastest firing semi auto firearm in the shotgun class. So this is going to be OP or meta or whatever, and it's going to be really annoying. Destroys targets at close range with impunity. Free weapon in the Battle Pass. Dual Kadachi is coming at launch. A powerful melee weapon that can quickly move towards a target with longer range attacks. Hopefully they're not as broken as these and the Kali sticks were in Warzone 1 for the longest time. Uh, it's going to be free within the battle pass. Uh, but compared to the knife, this comes at a slight cost, a slower strafe speed and sprint. But you have better range and faster forward motion, so that's going to be obnoxious. Uh, crossbow launch window. You complete the 7... Uh, event challenges or purchase via store bundle and if you don't complete the challenge i'm sure there'll later be a way to unlock it also expect the new marksman rifle the tempest torrent to be available at mid-season as well as a new lethal equipment piece the shuriken remember each new weapon comes with a brand new set of camos to unlock for use across all your weapons expect well over a dozen new camos to be available to unlock by the end of season two new personal watercraft jet ski which by the way are they ever bringing dirt bikes back um this would be kind of the equivalent of having the dirt bike uh, let's see, it's nimble, sea craft capable of swiftly carrying up to two operators across any body of water on either map. Consider the personal watercraft the ATV of the sea, one of the faster ways to get around the map. Well, yeah, obviously it's the ATV, but the ATV now has, what, three seats? So this would be closer to the dirt bike or the old ATV. Although it's considerably weak compared to other available watercrafts, the PWC's quick speed makes it a hard target to hit. Hopefully it handles well, because I hate the vehicle handling in this game. Um, then Ronin's coming back. Sony Combat Pack is going to be only on PlayStation, even though they want to complain that Microsoft would have exclusives if they owned Activision, but, you know. Uh, rank level up to 500, and Combat Record and Leaderboard coming on Season 2. All of your Season 1 stats will not count. Stats will start at Season 2 and above. Um, and then for additional updates, be sure to check the patch notes. So that's it. Those are the changes coming according to the roadmap. Um, I will make a patch notes video. I'll probably make a video on the tactical information coming tomorrow. Um, I'll link the map video, the season two change video, and blog and the blog post for both of those, as well as the DMZ blog post that came out. I'll link all that stuff down below. Um, but thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate whether you watch the whole video, skipped around, whatever. I do appreciate you spending any time uh, at my, on my channel. Um, and please don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know when those other videos come, as well as any other videos for warzone or any other games i decide to make videos on um and let me know down below in the comments what you think of these changes these updates um i'm definitely interested to see how resurgence plays i'm cautiously cautiously optimistic but i'm kind of holding off to see how the patch notes go before i really start to make a decision on how i'm feeling but i am excited for season two and along with all the things that i mentioned will be linked down below so will all my socials my twitch which i'm streaming on pretty much every day now although for about the next week i won't be live I'm going to go visit some family, um, but I'm live pretty much every day. Otherwise, uh, TikTok and Instagram get posted on four to five days a week. And Twitter is just whatever I feel like talking about. It's not necessarily gaming. It's a lot of sports, a lot of gaming, and that's pretty much it. But check those out. And once again, thank you so much for watching. I will see you on a Sika Island before you know it. Get frying. Have a good day. Bye.